ready to took and cut this tang out, I clamped it down and took my cutoff wheel on my angle grinder. And uh, I cut that tang out because if you can see my forward, my anvil here, you see the edges are broke off, so I couldn't really forge down and get a good clean on it uh, shoulder like I wanted. Uh, but now you can see where when I was working earlier that my anvil was rocking. I got me a better stump. This thing's not going nowhere now, so we in good shape. It's a little lower, and that was my reason. But I, I think I'm gonna be all right right here with this height. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna. Uh, try to get us a handle fitted on this. Now I'm gonna do some sanding and polish this blade down a little smoother before I harden it. That way once it's hard, I don't have so much, it's not so hard to, to get a polish on this part that I've ground on. Now my handle options, I'm gonna put a bone handle on this. Uh, I had this, this is a nice big thick bone. And I may use it yet, I don't know, but it's pretty large. The problem I have is this is, so large in here. I did find another bone that I had stashed, and I'm not sure if this is off a deer or a cow. I can't remember, and I'm not that good at it. But you can see this is a lot smaller. This, that fits almost. The only problem is, is the curvature right here, and I need to uh, get that in there. I could try to curve my tang a little bit, and I did that on a knife already. This antler handle knife I finished up. I don't even know what kind of steel this is, but I know it's hard steel, and I know it's good steel because I have done tested it. And that was the only little piece of that. In fact, a guy gave me this and said, hey, make me a knife out of this piece of steel. So I did, and uh, I, it's been so long, he actually got another knife and didn't worry about it no more, didn't he? So, and we never finished it. I dug it out and finished it the other day. I still may give the guy the knife, I don't know. Uh, but I had this piece of antler and it wasn't quite long enough and my tang that I had on there, I heated it and put a bend in it. It comes to about right here in this antler. So I put a little piece of oak in there to space it and as I was grinding it down, it started turning black where I was burning into it and I liked that. It gave it a dark look. So, uh, and I polished this out some. You can see right in here, some of the, that's where it was forged uh, and then ground. And I, I, I tempered it with this forge and in the oil. So that is a good, and that, that thing, it'll cut hair. It'll make hair fly loose. Good little knife, but I don't know if I want to attempt to bend this large tang because see, it's about the width of my finger. And I don't know if I'm that good, so I was thinking about boiling this bone to see if it would soften it, because I've got to get that marrow out of it anyway. And uh, if I boil it, I, it might flex enough to allow that to slip on there no more than it is, because it's not a lot. So I'm going to do some experimenting with that. Uh, I wanted to show you my horseshoe knife. That turned out really nice. Uh, now, I made this just to practice my forging. Uh, this is inferior steel, obviously. It's a horseshoe. It's not carbon steel. Uh, it's not tool steel. It's just soft steel. But now, I hardened this edge in the water. I just brought the water level up to about to the top of where it's ground. And uh, I kind of rolled it in that water for about three, five seconds. I don't know. I didn't just time it. And then I dipped the whole thing in oil. And it's actually holding an edge fairly decent for whittling a little bit on metal. I've cut some leather with it. I've, I've cut a few odd and end things. It's not going to chop trees or cut nails into and, and cut into steel. And it's, you, you're going to damage that edge. But just using it mildly for a knife, it'll hold an edge and do pretty well. In fact, I kind of like it. So I'll keep this around as a novelty piece. And... Uh, I, it, it's got a good feel to it. I don't know it's the right size. Now, I, a lot of people would have made this handle part shorter. In other words, they would have started their blade about here and then cut it off there. I just wanted that where I had plenty to, you know, I, I don't know. I could have probably made it a little bit shorter and been all right. I could, but I wouldn't. I don't like the blade to start real close to my finger. I like to have some room to slip 
And uh, cause I have had a knife slip and cut my finger, so you have to be careful with that. But anyway, I wanted to show you those couple of things. Uh, hang with us, and we're gonna we're gonna do some sanding on this, and I'm gonna polish this out with a sander and some sandpaper and get it pretty smooth. And then I'm going to temper it, and uh, we're going to build a, a bolster for it. Uh, I've got a piece of steel here, and that's what we're going to work on next. Okay, what I decided with my knife, I'm not going to try to boil the bone. I think I am going to try to curve the tang and taper it down and make it fit into that existing bone and leave that bone shaped like it is. So I'm just, I'm scared if I boil it and soften it, it'll lose some shape. I don't know what it'll do to it. I just think that it'll be better if I do it this way. So we're gonna. I had some things come up yesterday. I didn't get to finish working on this, so we fixing to do this right here. It's another day, so y'all stick with us. We're gonna get this caught up. <laughs> Put a twist in it. Okay, I've never tried to put a twist in anything. I don't really have a vise out here. My vise is around under. I'm fixing to move that vise back over here and get everything set up where I can do my bow making 
and my blacksmith and all right here in this one little area. So I'll have to move my tiller and tree and my uh, vice around here and I'm gonna build a wall there. So, but right now I don't have anything other than some vice grips. So that being said, with two pair of vice grips, and the hole in this, I'm going to try to drop that there and maybe clamp it. I, I don't know exactly how I need to do this. Now they can't really get to each other, so I don't let them fight. That little stag back there on the other side of the wire is about six months old, maybe a little more. The other one's about two years old on this side. He's a beautiful rooster. But it's funny that that little one over there is giving him a fit. Let me go check on them, make sure they can't fight. I may have to separate some of them. I can't let them do that forever, but I did think it was funny for a minute.
Okay, me and audio is having fits, but we've had this sitting here curing for about two hours. I wanted to give it plenty of time. My audio went out during making the video at some point. The microphone went out. I had to get another one. 
Anyway, I'm using a uh, the headphones that come with your iPhone. I had an extra pair. I didn't realize something happened to them. They just quit. So I've had the worst luck with audio. So I apologize for that. We're gonna get you some music. Which by now you already will know that. But that's what happened. The audio went out. We're going to unwrap this. And we, I was griping during the video making. You didn't get to hear it about this tape. This brand of tape I'm using. This don't. It ain't real good for a whole lot. But it is working somewhat for this. Uh, but now I had used Loctite brand. Um, right here. This epoxy. And uh, it takes, it says it takes an hour to harden and then 24 hours for full strength. So I give it two hours. I've been letting this sit there. Went and ate and did some other things. But This is our knife. And I have not sharpened it. I'm going to sharpen the edge and I may polish a little more of what I was doing to polish it now. I'm, uh, I'm using this sander. I've got this is a thousand grit on here, and I'm just going back, but uh, I'll probably come back right now and go to like this is 800 grit, and I'll uh, just hand sand this and get it as smooth as I can. And this going, I'm going to leave these black hammer marks and stuff in this blade, and I'm trying to get it in the light where you can see. But anyway. Right there, you can tell. And see, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave that in there. So, but this shiny part, I'm gonna put a polish on that. But that's painstaking me just sitting here rubbing it. So what you do is you get a good rub and get it good and smooth, and it's easier with that power sander. And then once you do that, move up to another grip. But now, this is finished product pretty much. I'm gonna put some stain on this handle. I'm experimenting with some stains, and I may come back when I figure out what I'm going to use and do another video on that, but we're going to put a conclusion to this video. Uh, but we just, this is roughed out, and I'm not no professional knife maker. That's a giant bowie. I mean, hold that right up to your side. That's, that's a big bowie. Uh, and it's well put together. It's got a good hard edge on it. We quenched it. Uh, I did struggle in the making of this video getting my forge hot enough to heat the entirety of this blade. This is a little too much blade for my small forge to, to heat up the entire blade. I can heat any spot of it up, but to get the whole length of that, so I've got to stick to making some shorter knives with this forge until I get me a bigger forge. But uh, thank you guys for watching my videos. I appreciate it. Uh, I apologize about the sound. We're going to try to get some better equipment to work with here pretty quick. Uh, Got to have money to do that. Oh, poor boy out here making knives out of lawnmower blades. Don't have a lot. But now I did do the making of this, and I edited out the uh, footage of it because you couldn't hear what I was saying. But I took a piece that I had cut off making this tame, tempered it, and uh, I heated it up to critical temperature, and then I dipped it in water and water quenched it. I hit it with a hammer and it popped right off. So this lawnmower blade will make a good knife. Now this is good lawnmower blades. These are like, for three lawnmower blades, we paid like 80 bucks for these. Uh, we cut grass with them all year. So we don't buy the cheap blades, but now most of your grass cutting people, if you go to your lawn, local lawn service and say, hey, can I have your old blades that you throw away? Most of the time they say, yeah, you can have them. Because, I mean, they're scrap iron to them, and uh, at most they're worth a dollar maybe to, in scrap price. And scrap's not worth a whole lot around here. So you can, if you want to make you a knife out of a lawnmower blade, and obviously you can take a cut-off wheel and cut you a shorter piece and make a smaller knife. Uh, I'm going to make some smaller knives. I'm probably not going to make any more this big because I had such a hard time tempering it until I get a better way of heating the entirety of that blade up. But now, you can tell... I can take a file, you see that, and you can hear how that just, that don't bite into it, so that quench, that's good hard steel, so I'm going to get a shot and put on this, thank y'all for watching my videos, we'll see y'all next time.